First of all, and I asked Musana way back when she asked me, I said, Musana, um, I don't think I fit on the program. I'm not gay enough. Am I gay enough, Musana? Um, no, I, I really have this thing where I feel like, because I'm, I'm not really into um, activism, I rather believe in advocacy, where you have a different way of approaching things. Um, this day feels a little bit like a full circle because um, the two of them are from PE and my father is from that side. So I'm a child of the Eastern Cape. I was born there and I did all my school years there. But then 13 years ago, I moved to the Free State. And um, I'm a child of the universe. So I feel like the Free State is my home. Yeah. So um, wherever I go, I preach Free State art. But um, if we, for instance, look at the kind of art that I'm doing, first of all, I tell people that I'm a theatre maker um, that happens to be gay. But I do believe if it was not for the fact that I'm gay, I wouldn't have been so, I wouldn't have been this kind of artist that I am today. And I wouldn't have been as sensitive um, to what I say to people or to how I think of things and of people. So I'm actually very grateful that I'm in this space, not this particular space that I'm talking about now, but in this space of knowing my sexuality, knowing my identity, because I feel like through my identity, I create the kind of work that I do in this, in this moment. Um, I'm from a very small town, and right now, theater is the only thing that keeps me sane. Because I was in school and I was, for instance, bullied by teachers that I love, or a particular teacher that I love, that went to an extent where he, for instance, gave me a, a girl's name. I never wanted to be a girl. Where he, for instance, gave me a girl's name and the entire classroom started to call me that name that I don't approve of. I was also in a school where the children said bad things, but I think the most painful was when an aunt in my strat, um, in my street, there comes the Afrikaans into the strat, <laughs> where an aunt, where an aunt, for instance, an, an older person in my street, I will never forget this moment, I was in school, um, high school, and she looked at me and she looked very disgusted. And she looked at me and she said, the fucking movie. And I didn't do anything. And I will never forget that day and how I felt at that particular moment. And all I can remember was, I knew that this was my town. This is the people that I love. These people love me, but obviously they love me on conditions. Okay? So for me to really be who I want to be, um, spiritually, I need to maybe get out of the town. And I left the town. And I must say, um, to be independent and so on, said, gives you so much freedom. So the kind of work that I create was never um, out and out or 100% queer work. But I can tell you that it's social justice work because I think Nosana knows my work. So the kind of work that I create, it's always to speak, can I say, on behalf of the minority, on behalf of people that's a little or sensitive towards this world that we kind of live in. Sometimes I feel like, I wish I could create a space where all these beautiful souls can go and stay because this world is a little bit too rough. So that, and this is the kind of artist that I am. Also to be in theater and to be on stage is some form of a liberation to me. Because on stage, when I write my place and when I perform in place, on stage I can directly have a conversation with adults that I could never have the conversation with. Because the family where I come from and the community where I come from, I'm the adult and you are the child and you don't have feelings and we are not gonna converse into in this conversation. And I'm this age, but still when I go back home, I'm still the child. So obviously the way that I was raised, I could never have a conversation with, uh, with my uncles or aunts or parents. So when I'm on stage, I can tell them all the things that I've always wanted to say to them. And that's why I love theatre, and that's why I love the stage, and that's why I feel like theatre gives me some sort of sanity. And I believe that if you look at the spelling of theatre, we write it the same way as we write the theatre when people go to for operations. And I don't think there's an error with that. 
These doctors are healing for me the external wounds while we need to, as artists, need to take full responsibility of what we do because we are healing the internal wounds. And that's the kind of artist that I am. So I would like to believe that I am an advocate for social justice issues. And I do that by the uh, method of making use of theatre. Thank you, Musa. Thank you. Where am I going with my career first? Um, I was an academic for a while, um, do it on the side, and I decided I don't want to be in that space anymore. Um, I want to go fully into just do plays, um, theatre shows. Um, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, also expect in 2020 to get all the South African grade 4, 5 and 6 books that I wrote, Creative Arts book for the South African schools. Um, so that is absolutely amazing. So your child will learn things that I wrote. <laughs> so um, where am I going with my career? Obviously, for, of, of, it's obvious for me, in the arts you can't really, I don't know, you can't really see far because it's so complex. But where am I going is to create more social justice work, um, to create it more with, um, with people in the minority group. Um, work that, I, that I'm passionate um, for is, for instance, feminist work that are uh, the work that I always do. I like doing, um, I like writing for women and I like it being performed by women and I like the cast and crew also to be women. Um, the only bad thing is when a festival only wants women, then I need to pull my out of that group. That's the only bad thing that's happening right now. So um, I, I would really like to create more work and bring more con um, bring more subject matters to the theatre space, really make theatre be what theatre is intended to be. Because sometimes I go to theatre and um, I see we a little bit, we derail. We're a little bit de we derail from what theatre is supposed to be. Theatre is supposed to heal, or you need to make it very clear, I'm only there to entertain. Okay, because we are working with people and how you influence the people is something very big. We call something like theatre of the resistance. So are you going to spark something on the audience? And if you make them feel, I always say theatre needs to make people feel. If they don't feel, then we, then we don't have to do theatre. I like to do, go and watch plays in a language that I don't understand, especially when I go to now the National Arts Festival, I go and watch a lot of closer plays. And I'm part of Kamaku, the, the indigenous festival, where we just do indigenous stories. And I love watching work of a language that I don't understand because I believe theatre needs to make us feel. So more of um, the artists and myself, where I want to move to is to make people feel because that is the most important thing. The other day I was rehearsing in Stella Bosch with a girl and she said she, for the first time, she likes it when people touch her. <laughs> and it's because I came and I hugged her and I didn't know her. But then she needed to prepare herself for the rest of the rehearsals. I'm gonna hug her and I'm gonna touch her because that's the kind of person that I am. And I feel like also our children also need that and that's what I understand in the theater that I've been doing. Children are not being used, um, they are not used to being touched. And therefore, if someone else touched them, the wrong person touched them, mm. then um, a certain feeling goes off and they like the feeling and it's actually a wrong feeling. Mm. So we need to touch each other more and that's oh. why I think, no, 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 I, I promise you, we need to touch each other more. The right people need to learn, teach you um, that that feeling when you feel when I touch you, it's the right feeling. So when someone else touch you, and I'm talking about feeling in theatre as well, so when someone touch you that's not supposed to touch you, you know that this is not the way that I'm supposed to feel. Yeah. So many times I also talk to rape victims because I always interview people before I write a story and then they say they didn't want to come out because they feel they enjoyed it to some extent. And that's the thing of touching, that's the thing of feeling. So I need to move more with my work into creating work that makes people really feel, that makes people really think. I was a little scared of the movements that we're creating. I promise you, I'm scared of the movements that we're creating because I'm so scared that we will, 
we will we will be in this movement and we will constantly fight for our rights and what we need and what we deserve. That one day when we get it, I'm so scared that we will forget how to enjoy it and we will still be in the process of fighting. Um, and that's what that's what scares me um, about that. So I think that is where I need to place myself as an artist to be part of a movement to fight these social justice issues that I need to address, but also in the process, also find ways and means to enjoy myself. Because I'm a very selfish, selfish artist. When I create my work, when you see my work on stage, that work was for me, it wasn't for you, okay? <laughs> After the show and during the show, I see, oh, it's for you as well, but it was for me first, okay? Um, I remember I did a show, you actually document some bits, of, yes, Adjusted. The only reason why I created Adjusted was because um, I wrote about um, the rape crisis in South Africa, but it was because I was walking in the street, then I saw this on this lamp, it said a woman died and she was raped, and I felt nothing. I felt nothing. And me feeling nothing bothered me. Then I was like, okay, you need to do something about your feeling, the, the, the fact that you don't feel for these things. So I created shows for me. And then I went back and I created the shows and we were talking about it last night. I even went to the extent with that show to barricade people. I let them step into this thing. I bargained the theater. I even made the theater smaller because I want you to feel as if I'm having a conversation with you. So I even made the theater smaller where you need to walk in so you can feel trapped so we can talk about this. So that was first for me, even Ruela, that was me talking to the adults in my community, to my mother and father with domestic violence in our house, to the lady in the street that walk away with a child in the bag every night. And tomorrow morning when I go to the spaza shop, she's, still, she's back with her husband. Do you understand? She only walked away that, for that night. So when I create, I create for me to have a conversation, so I'm a selfish creator, but then at the end of the day, when you are on stage, you actually feel, oh, you did create for you, Jeff, but you also create for an audience member. When an audience member come back to you, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to put a color to it, because the color matter, mm -hmm. I see color. And a guy came to watch my show, and Ruela, and I met him at the festival grounds the next day and he came to me and he said he came to watch the show and he told me his father did the same to his mother and he did not have, a, uh, um, he did not have any relationship with his father, he did not talk to his father even though they stayed in the same house because he was so upset at his father for doing this. And he said only after watching the show he could forgive his father and his father died eight years ago already. So then gives you a direct message that theater makers, and because we talk about performing arts, must never stop creating, but they must also never stop knowing their responsibility when they put work on stage. We have total responsibility for how we make the people feel and with what do they walk out there. Always, don't create just for NJ. Okay? Yeah. Okay.